Okay, Doug, you're good to go. Very good. Give me just a second. Kim, I think I'm missing an announcement again. This time I know I put it in. Send it to him again. <laughs> uh, do you want me to read it? That would be fine. Okay. Thank you. So much for sharpening up. <laughs> <laughs> I Good devoted evening. myself to our new member. Good evening. Welcome to the August 11, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or a suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting followed following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, and building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning instruction. With this, I will ask our clerk to read the legal notice. Is Mark here? If he is not, I can I am do that. I was just there he is. <clears throat> there he is. Thank you. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, August 11th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application number 5037-20, Keith Letalippi. Seeking to replace fence in the in the rear yard with a six foot high cedar fence and four foot high cedar fence in front of 33 Woodland Street. Application number 5038-20. Damon Mitchell seeking to replace a gate across the driveway with the cedar gate at 25 Belmont Street. Application number 5039-20. James F. Penders seeking to remove fence in front of the property without replacement at 520 Main Street. Application number 5040-20, Christine Pace seeking to replace garage doors with two Clope Coachman Series garage doors at 335 Main Street. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836. 2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number or for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 27th day of July 2020. Thank you very much, Mark. Kim, uh, before we go further, uh, did you already make your announcement that this was being recorded for state statute? I did. It's Governor Lamont's executive order 7B. It's being recorded. Thank you. 
Thanks. Second, uh, Damien has sent me a message indicating he'd like uh, an invitation if you can send it to him. That would be appreciated. And I will go over the attendance right now. I think we have a great turnout tonight. So we may have uh, five voting members available among the um, regular members, Ovian, uh, Wolf, uh, Raymond, um, Chris, and Claire. And then uh, we also had uh, two alternates showing uh, on the Zoom screen as well, Vasek and Kathleen. And as I indicated a moment ago, uh, Damien is trying to join us. And if he can, that would be great. Uh, alternates are always welcome to participate in our questioning and deliberations during the uh, public hearing and the public meeting. Although voting tonight will just be the uh, five regular members since all five are in attendance. So with that, I will proceed to application number 5037-20. Keith LaTulip, the project at 33 Woodland Street. If I'm pronouncing the name uh, wrong, please correct me. Thank you. You're muted still. Yeah, excuse me, the pronunciation was, was close. It's LaTulip. Great. Thank you. Welcome this evening. Sir, is there anything that you'd like to tell us about your project in addition to what you submitted uh, to our Historic District Coordinator, Kim? Uh, it's fairly straightforward to what we submitted. It's, again, it's a, replacing an anchor fence that has been there for probably 40 or 50 years uh, with a six-foot privacy cedar fence from the rear of the yard to approximately uh, two-thirds of the way to the front and then transitioning to a picket. That's great. Thank you for describing that to us for the record uh, again. And I, at this point, I'll ask if there are any questions of any commissioners for the applicant with us right now. Hearing none, uh, I'll just indicate, sir, that if there aren't any further questions, in a moment, we'll take a brief break to see if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this. And then this matter will be taken up at the public meeting not too long from now if you'd like to stay with us. You don't have to. You can also check with uh, Kim Wolf, our Historic District Coordinator, in the morning. Very Thank good. you for joining us this evening. Thank you. You bet, sir. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, I'll move to the next matter on the agenda, which is application number 5038-20. That's Damon Mitchell, the project at 25 Belmont Street. Damon, are you with us? I am with you, I'm here. That's great. So, is there anything you'd like to uh, let us know for the record? Uh, while you're with us here at this time, in addition to the paperwork you provided with the application. Sure. Um, I have a long driveway that goes into my garage, which is set back at the very end of the property. All of Belmont Street's kind of like that. And so there's always been a wooden gate that separates the back half of the driveway and backyard from the front half. And uh, about 10 or 11 years ago, the wooden gate that was there fell apart and I had it replaced. And um, sure enough, it's fallen apart again to the point where it just got blown apart in a storm back in April. And so uh, literally half of it is gone. And so it's time to get it replaced. And so my, the replacement that I'd like to put in is wood like the one that was there, but a little bit different in that it has a uh, lattice design so that air can flow through because one of the reasons the gate got blown away is the wind is so strong it just and the the force against the uh the wall of the gate is such that it just blows the lock and the wooden wooden parts apart and so the lattice design will allow some air to flow and hopefully when we have these storms uh, my gate will be a little more resilient thank you for that explanation it's really helpful and uh, thank you for joining us this evening. 
Are there any questions of any commissioners for the applicant while we have them with us? Yes, I do. Uh, sure. Bostic Midlis. I'm curious what the height of the gate is. Uh, I guess it's about, I'm 5'6". It's probably about four feet. It's always been about the same height. Okay. It just, you know, there's no dimensions on the uh, picture that you submitted. And as you said, uh, the present one isn't whole. So uh, I'm just going by the picture and what I saw driving by. And I'd like the, I like the very interesting design of dipping down in the middle, which is kind of neat. Thank you, Vasek. Are, uh, is everyone satisfied with uh, there being a finding here that the, at its highest point, the gate is no taller than the one that it will be replacing? And if it is, Damon, could you just correct me about that? Same height. Thank you. Same height. And it's about the height of when you stick your arm out. So that's why I said about four feet. Sure. Well, you have to reach over it to get the latch, usually. So. You have to reach over a little bit to get the latch, I do anyway, but I'm short. Thank you very much, Damon. Is there anyone else besides Vasek that has a question for the applicant at this time? Hearing none, Damon, thank you for joining us this evening. You're welcome to stay. The meeting is moving along. Okay, thanks for uh, having me. We don't me. have a very it. long agenda. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, I'll move to application number 5039-20, James F. Penders, the project at 520 Main Street. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So this is uh, Jim Penders. Yep. And if you uh, have anything that you'd like to let us know in addition to the information provided in the application, you can do that at this time. Uh, I'll also open it to questions from the commissioners uh, if there are any. Sure, we, we love our white picket fence out front of our house and um, <clears throat> it's just been in disrepair for a while. I've, I've tried to do the best I could with it to maintain it and it's just kind of decayed and become a little, I, my wife says an eyesore and I get uh, one vote, she gets 10 votes. So um, <laughs> it is, it is uh, starting to waver a little bit and tilt toward the sidewalk. I've tried to shore it up, but it's, uh, we've gotten some bids on it and it's just been so exorbitant to replace in for like, uh, like form, I guess, that we've at least wanted to explore the possibility of taking it down and not replacing it. And um, we still may replace it if we've got one uh, contractor that's supposed to get back to us shortly. But we wanted to at least have the option of taking it down and, uh, and not replacing the, the, the white picket fence. Mr. Thank Patterson, you very much. I like your fence a lot, but I don't think that it's necessarily inappropriate for you not to have a fence. Yeah. Um, and I do want to say that I appreciate you coming in for the permission to take it down. We do have a problem occasionally in the district with people um, leaving things up until they fully fall apart. So I do, I do want to express my thanks for you coming in today. Thank oh, you, welcome. Jen. No, it's my pleasure. Are there, are there any other commissioners that have uh, questions or comments uh, at this time? Uh, I agree with Jen. It's a great fence, but um, not necessary. And if it's removed, those pretty party beds, beds that you have behind will be seen more. So you're going to yeah. switch out fence maintenance with some weeding like, like the rest of us. But yeah, thank you again for coming in. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. That was Claire Mead. Any others? I'll, I'll just join uh, those uh, commissioners that spoke already. Uh, I think that it will be good for you to have an opportunity to see it down and then decide if you really are missing something that you would like to restore uh, or if you'd like to focus on the gardens behind it. Uh, so thank you very much again for coming in. We'll be uh, having a public meeting shortly and so you can stay with us if you like uh, and we should reach a conclusion um, not that long from now. Great. Thank you for all the work you guys do. Thank you very much, Mr. Penders. 
Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move to the application number 5040-20, Christine Pace. This is the project at 335 Main Street. Hello, I'm here. Welcome. Thank you. I'm looking to replace my garage doors. I did choose an arched window, which is trying to mirror what the front porch looks like just to keep things pretty aesthetic. And that's pretty much it. Just to verify, uh, the person with us today is the applicant, Christine Pace? Correct. Thank you. We only have the uh, um, logo on screen. Uh, so I just wanted to ask that you verify it. Thank you. And I'll ask at this point if there are any questions of any commissioners for the applicant while we have her with us. Chris, the, uh, Chris Lyons here. The application says the trim as well um, is going to be replaced. The rotted trim, or is that crossed out? That was crossed out. We're doing like for like. It's just yep. pretty much maintenance. Just for the record. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have one minor question uh there's two drawings of the door submitted the one on top uh and then with some hardware on it and then the one on the bottom with a little bit less hardware on it uh, bless you the main difference between the two is the one on top has a piece of hardware that sort of joins the two doors at the bottom basically it's a pull for the door to lift it but I just find it a little bit awkward looking simply because it joins the two doors. And I'm just wondering if the applicant had noticed that and it given it any thought. I can go either way. I can have it with the lift and I can have it without the lift. Aesthetically, if you want a lift on the bottom, aesthetically, two lifts, one on each quote unquote door would work better. Functionally, it's all the same. Okay, I'm not sure because I only have the one picture that doesn't have the lift on it at all. So I'm not sure which one was sent. If you're just going to use the button anyway, it won't matter. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> the discrepancy, if, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, it's Kim. Um, the issue, Vasek, that you're seeing is the original that was sent um, to me was kind of chopped off and it has the one lift at the bottom. Okay. So I asked for a no. new sheet that had kind of the complete um, non cut off piece of paper and those do not have the lift. So okay. that is the discrepancy. All right. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, Vasek. I'll just note for the record that I noticed that uh, Damien, our third alternate was successful in joining us this evening. So I'll just note that for the record that he's been with us as well. Thank you, Damien. Are there any other questions for the applicant at this time? Hearing none. Thank you for joining us this evening, um, Ms. Pace. And I will ask if there are any members, if there's any member of the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I'll move to the next item on our agenda, which is the modification that is application number 5042-20, Elaine Cahill, seeking an amendment to the project at 292 Hartford Avenue. This is the last item on our uh, public hearing agenda tonight. Is Elaine with us? Actually, uh, Elaine is not. Uh, my name is Sean Maynard. I'm with Renewal by Anderson. I think I've uh, come before you before in the past. Um, this is the third phase of her project and she's finishing up. Um, so Elaine asked me to, you know, to come in before you and actually, uh, you know, go for the amendment. That's great. Sean, could you please uh, give us your business address for the record, please? Yeah, so it's going to be um, 10 Reservoir Road in Smithfield, Rhode Island. Thank you very have, much for joining yeah, us this another, evening. We have, we have another location in Cromwell as well, 
on corporate 10 corporate row. Thank you. Yeah. So, so go ahead. Uh, I was actually going to defer to you. Is there anything that you'd <laughs> like to let us know at this time? Yeah. So um, again, third phase, we're doing like to like for all the windows, except there's one um, addendum or one change that you want to do that you want to bring before the board to get your approval. I don't know if you have any pictures of the house in front of you at all. Do you have any photos? We you do. do. We okay. do. So if you're looking at the front of the house, uh, guys, um, on the top left, you're going to see um, some casement windows with some transoms above it. You'll see that window. It is a brown color. All the other windows are white in front of the house. You see what I'm looking at? The mm -hmm. front, the top yes. left corner. Okay, what you want to do is convert those like for like to white windows to match all the other white windows. So let me, let me make sure I'm understanding it because I stood yeah. there and looked at the house. On the left-hand right. side, the sun porch windows that are now brown, she wants to be white. Exactly, yeah, that's a sun porch. Left-hand exactly. side of the house. Yep, okay. so right above the entry door, if mm -hmm. you're looking at it, um, Claire, it's Claire, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so right above the, uh, you know, the entry door, Claire, uh, is that little sunroom up there. Those, um, they're older style, and I don't know why, but they're the only one that are different colors than any other window in the house. All the other windows are white, and those are actually brown. So we want to make it, you know, more kind of, you know, homogeneous and have it all look the same. So she would like to do those as white. And that's the only thing. Other than that, I think we were going to go, they were going to approve them right off the, because this is the third phase. They know what we do. We've already done all the windows other than what's left. And, but because we wanted to change the color from brown to white, then it was an addendum. And that's why we have to come before you tonight. So I'm just asking this, if we can get that approved for us. That would be great. Because we want to order the project and get it installed before winter. But let me just ask, there are a number of um, stained, not stained glass, but part Grits, partitions. Grit. Right. Um, quite lovely. And I assume those are staying in place. You're not going to be replacing those with anything. Right. We're going to keep that same look. So the exact same, same, same look or the exact same windows? Well, it's going to be the same look. Like, so, um, yeah, the same, the same look, same the grid pattern. You're talking about the grids, right? The grid no, pattern. No, I'm talking about the pattern. windows that have, Vasek, you go. You can say it better than I can. The ones that have the little arches in the top and what do you call yes. those? The transoms? There's transoms. There's a double there's, hung. Uh, there's two, there's a, it's, called twin, it's called twin casements. So they're casement windows, but they're double casements. No. Below. These are stationary windows. Up, up, up top, they are. Yeah. The ones below are operational. But you're not touching the stationary windows that are decorative. No, no, we are. We're doing that whole thing. Everything I think Claire, yeah. I'm sorry. I think Claire is asking about the upper sash of the windows in the third floor. Am I correct about that? No. No. All right. Is, I'm going to speak for Claire here. Thank you. This is on the PDF page seven of our, of what was submitted. Correct. It's a photograph of the side of the house. There is a small, probably stationary window up high. There is another window probably oh, on a staircase. Well, on the side, the wrong side. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought we were still talking about the front. Nope. Yeah, those are stationary windows. You're correct. Yeah. And there's a double hung window probably on the stairs leading up between the first, uh, sec first and second yep. floor. And those are being replaced? Yes. With the same and grid pattern. If you look on the third floor, I don't know if you see the photo, because it's a special design, the grid pattern. It's, you know, with the diamond at the bottom. We're going to mimic the same look at, on those windows there that, that are there now. Yeah. Follow? The, the photograph does not have a picture of the third floor. The third, okay, so on the third floor, there's like a diamond pattern. So yeah. basically, we're going to mimic that same diamond pattern that we did on the top floor. And they're the same windows on the, on the staircase that you're talking about. Is they have the same grid pattern, which we're going to mimic that. Yeah. Same look. Do, are so, those, they're, because they're stationary, are those windows in bad shape? Could they just be re puttied and painted? Well, Molly, uh, no, they're actually, they're, there's reasons why they're, they're being replaced. And one is not energy efficient, because um, right now, because of the age of the glass, she's losing a lot of energy through all her windows that aren't energy efficient because they're mostly. That's not, re that's not really our concern, though. Our concern it's also is three windows out of an entire yeah. house. Yeah, so we're talking, all right, we're talking three windows, but we did it on the other windows that had the same look and we replaced those. 
The so, only thing I would point out is that that's on the third story of a very tall house. And as you mm -hmm. come down to, to the ground, right. you're getting a much closer look at them. It's going to look different, noticeably different than, you know, because all the other windows are all renewal windows. They'll have a look. And then if you keep those two older window styles, it's going to look different than the other windows. It's going to so look like a decorative like, window. Huh? It'll look like a decorative window. Well, I mean, that's your opinion, but I mean, it's the customer wants, you know what I mean, um, you know, to replace those as well. Um, so, I mean, you're welcome to your opinion. So, but she wants to have it done. So, um, and we've done it with the same, the same window that you're talking about in the stairwell is the same windows that we've done, you know, around is like, I think on the side and the front, we did them as well. On the front, we did this, if you look in the front, um, on the top, on the third floor, if you look at the front view above the porch, there's that sun porch we talk about, but the third floor above the sun porch is the same type of window that we're talking about with those fancy grids. So that's the look that we're going for on the side to keep everything consistent. I have a question for you, Sean, which is that the um, windows that uh, are on page three of this attachment that we have, those yeah. are your replacements already? So I'm not sure what you're actually looking at as far as three. On the third floor. Yes, yes. Or on the third floor. Yeah, yeah, those are our replacements, yes. And on the, uh, the side, uh, the ones that you're talking about today, uh, it looks like the lower of the two windows that's in that stairwell looks like a double hung that's operable, like these windows that you pointed out in the dormer on the third floor facing front. But to Claire's point, it looks like the window above that is a fixed sash. It is. is. That correct? It is a fixed sash. It is. That's correct. Okay. And Doug, there's two more. Page nine of 16 are two yep. more of those. That's fixed. correct. I was just looking. Thank you, Chris. Oh, thank you. Different pat. They're upside down. The one on page seven right. Yeah, exactly. is upside it down. Is. And these it two fit down. the diamond patterns up top. Right, right. They reversed it, and you a good pickup on that. Yeah, exactly. It's upside down. So, uh, my right. photograph is not clear enough on the upper part of nine to see, but uh, it looks like there are a total of three of these uh, fixed sash windows versus double hung. Right. You can't see the top right. one on. Right. Right. Yeah, I think I think there are three fixed stats, fixed sash and one double hung, all with decorative grid patterns. Okay, right, you got it, Claire. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much uh, for clarifying all that. Are there okay. any other questions about where the work is going to happen, or of the contractor for what's proposed? Hearing none, uh, I want to thank you, Sean, for joining us today. Okay. Uh, and uh, because this is the last element of the public hearing, uh, you are uh, encouraged to stay for the public meeting, although you need not do so. Okay. Well, thank so, you, everybody, for your time. You bet. I'll ask at this point if there's any member of the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting on all of the aforementioned items. So moved. Is there I'll a second? second? Claire. Claire. So the motion was uh, with Jen and the second with Claire. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The public hearing is closed and the public meeting is open. And we will proceed with application number 5037-20, Kifla Tulip. That's the project at 33 Woodland. Move Take to a approve. Is there a motion? Go ahead, Jen. Move to approve as submitted. Thank I'll you. Second. second by Chris. Discussion, please. It's a very nice fence. He provided us with all the information we needed, including the plot plan. And I think it's going to be a great improvement over what's there right now. <laughs> I will second you. that. Having been down the road for 34 years, uh, I'm not a big fan of chain link fences in the front. And this will be great. It's a great installer as well. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jen. Any other comments by any other commissioners? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5038-20, Damon Mitchell. The project at 25 Belmont. Is there a motion? Move to approve with the stipulation that the gate shall be the same height as the present gate. Thank you, Jen. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mark. Any discussion? So, I'll just, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the applicant's coming in with a very nice design. Uh, it will solve a problem of uh, his pro problem of ceiling in the backyard, as well as allowing wind to blow through it to keep the gate lasting a lot longer. Uh, I think the lattice design will also help, possibly help with the longevity of the gate. Thank you, Vasek. Uh, I would uh, just note that I'm grateful that. Uh, he came in along with the others who've been here tonight. Uh, we haven't had a chance to look back on these Zoom meetings very well, but I do think that they have been largely successful and uh, convenient for our uh, participants. So I'm uh, glad that everyone's been able to enjoy them from their comfort of their own home. I'll call a vote at this point. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries and the application is approved with stipulation. Moving to application 5039-20, James F. Penders, the project at 520 Main Street. I'll entertain a motion. I'll, I'll move to approve we, uh, I'll, I'll move that we approve without stip at that. Sorry, can I talk? Uh, approved as submitted. as submitted. Thank you, Claire. I'll is there second. a second? I'll second. Is that Mark? Yes. Great. Discussion, we already did have some earlier. The only thing I would add to that for my sake is that is a pretty heavily traveled area of Main Street uh, that may merit towards them wanting uh, the fence once it's down or it uh, may attribute to some of the beating that it takes uh, in uh, a busy area. So uh, I think this is a opportunity where we can go with the homeowner's preference and uh, we wish them well in this endeavor and as Jen said earlier we really appreciate that they involved us. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5040-20, Christine Pace, the garage door project at 335 Main Street. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve with the following stipulation that the handles uh, for lifting will be in the center of the door. I'll second. Thank you. That was Mark with the second by Claire, I believe. Jennifer. So, um, any discussion? My only question what? is, if you're going to put handles and you're going to center it in the door, do you want it on the center of the door or the two simulated doors? Two the handles two per simulated. door or one handle per door? Two simulated doors. Okay. Two handles per door. Two handles per door. And Vasek, is that satisfy most of oh, your yeah. concerns? Yeah, I'm just, you know, if you detail, see it, detail. The between them, it ties them sure. together. And they just. These are the any... lift handles, correct? Yes. Correct. That's great. Are there any other commissioners that wish to comment on this application before I call a vote? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulation. Finally, application number 5042-20, Elaine Cahill, the amendment to the approvals for application number 4753-18.
uh, the window project at 292 Hartford <laughs> Avenue. Is there a motion? You know, for discussion, I will move that we approve with the stipulation that the three stationary windows with decorative grids and the one double hung with decorative grids not be replaced. Second. Uh, second by Jen, uh, the original for discussion by Claire. So um, I, I think that, the, I mean, as we, as we said, trying to replicate Victorian, I guess we would call those Victorian decorative grid patterns on the third floor of a very tall house is one thing. As you move down the house, it's much more noticeable. There's stationary windows, three or four windows, energy efficiency. She's got the house pretty buttoned up. My only concern, Claire, would be this. The operability of the double hung window and the necessity to cover it with some sort of storm is a it has something that has a lot more in common with the other double hung windows than it does with the fixed windows. And so if I had made the motion, I would have uh, been willing to consider um, limiting the retention of the existing windows to the three fixed, even though in one of the cases, one of those fixed windows is so close to one of the windows that will be a replacement. And I guess part of the reason why I could live with that in my mind was because it's on the side, uh, even though it's lower. Uh, so I don't know if any other commissioner feels similarly, uh, but I do think that uh, unless they are operating those other three windows, which they may very well do, if they don't, they could probably put fixed storm window glass on the inside or the outside if they're concerned about energy on those three windows. But the double hung window is a bit more of a challenge and we could end up with a storm that covers the window anyway, um, which certainly may have its own benefit, but um, there you go. That's one alternative thought. So is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, keep in mind this. We speak of the third floor windows as being, you know, way up there and high and not particularly noticeable. However, if somebody does take any notice of it, they will see that they are replacement windows. And that, as we have seen many times before, when you replace a true divided light window with a simulated divided light window, it's noticeable. You can see it. Uh, the one over one windows in the house, they work, they work acceptably despite the color. Uh, I think when the applicant originally came in for the uh, windows that were on the sun porch, she was trying to match in color the rest of the house. And then we did the white. Uh, this is the only, going to be the only remaining bit of history of this house as far as what it had for fenestration. And if you take away that, it's, it's gone. It's, there is, there will be no history of it left. And I think that this is important for this building. It's really too bad that the third floor got changed out also, but that's done. Thank you, Vasek. Are there others uh, that wish to echo or add anything? I would just add that similar to your recommendation that the double hung with the uh, Victorian mullions there be replaced as the third floor was. I could live with that, but I do agree with Claire on the uh, stationary windows. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I, other... ideally, I'd like to see those fixed windows retained. Um, you know, they can be painted white. And as you pointed out, Doug, there's some really great products out now for um, an interior storm that fit into that space that work really great. Um, they used to have them at Lucky Lou's. I don't know if they do anymore when it was the prior restaurant. 
but um, they're red, they're pretty readily available too. So I think any energy com efficiency concern is easily easily met, and retaining those three fixed windows I think is very important. So noted. Are there any alternates that wish to speak to this as well, besides Fatsik? Hearing none, I will call the vote. Well, Claire, you had so, your the double hung included. Do we want to yep. withdraw and revise? Um, you know what? I'd actually like y'all to vote that down, and then we can re-motion for the other three. Okay. If that's uh, what the intention is, I okay. think Vatsik argued against that, and some of the others have as well. So, I mean, you're welcome to vote against your own motion since it was for discussion, but it would be helpful for this commissioner to know if you feel that the double hung should be retained as an artifact as well. Yes, I would like us to vote on the motion that's on the table, and then we can make a second motion if we need to. Yep, okay. That's fair. that's fair. Thank you very much. So at this point, all those in favor of uh, Claire's motion with, I think it was Jen's second, Doug, say aye. Doug. Pardon me? Before you get there, can you repeat the stipulation just so that it's very clear before you vote on it, please? Sure. The stipulation is for the uh, uh, three fixed uh, one light windows, or I'm sorry, the, fi the three fixed window, three fixed single sash windows, and the double hung window, all of which uh, exhibit the um, diamond light pattern to be uh, retained and not replaced. And also the double hung that has that. Did you include that in there, Doug? Yes. Okay. Well, the because I, think, yeah. I think it's three fixed and then one double hung, one double. if yeah. I'm correct. Thank you. So thank you. Kim, does that clarify for you? Because I just wanted point? it to be very clear when you were voting. Thanks. No, understand. That's important, of course. So all those in favor of uh, that, the motion to retain those three single sash windows and the uh, double sash window that exhibit the diamond light pattern, say aye. 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 Are there no other eyes here? <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, uh, so I think we have three uh, and opposed. Opposed, opposed vote. Yes. Nay. Nay. And that's Mark and Chris. Um, thank you very much, folks. Uh, the motion carries and the uh, application, uh, the modification request is denied. I believe that's the correct language here. No. 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 It was approved. Stipulations. Approved with stipulations. Sorry. stipulations. I, let, me, let me correct that. The uh, approval uh, was made with a stipulation, and that is what was just ratified. Um, I'll just note for the record, I'm sorry, in the end I voted, uh, or if I threw off my fellow commissioners by voting for uh, against uh, the position I was taking in argument, but I was persuaded by the other two commissioners uh, and the alternate who spoke. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, we thank the uh, uh, contractor for coming in as well. And if he has any questions, he can certainly address them with Kim uh, afterwards. Uh, I will at this time ask if there are uh, minutes to approve from July 28th. Hi, hey Doug. Um, you, Chris, Claire, and Vasek were present. Thank you so much, Linda. We have our voters here, and uh, this is our time when I acknowledge uh, your assistance as well as that of our historic district coordinator. And uh, I uh, know I speak for all of us when I say we're grateful for your assistance. Are there any changes to the minutes that need to be made, commissioners? Hearing none, I'll call the vote for to approve them. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the minutes are approved. Public comments on general matters of the historic district. Yeah. If there are no public comments at this point, I'll move to 
report of the historic district coordinator. Don't have one today. Thank you, Kim. And then finally, voting of officers. Is this something we're going to address this evening? I think we should. That's great. Claire, perhaps you have a motion? Uh, sure. I'll, for discussion purposes, I'll move a slate of officers. Um, I will move uh, Jen as chair, Mark as vice chair, and Chris as clerk. You'll notice my name is not on the list, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Claire. Is there a second? Oh, I could second um, that motion. Um, so that leaves us uh, with discussion and I'll just note that uh, typically we have uh, put forward consensus slates uh, at during the summer of uh, after the appointments have occurred by council and uh, we've reached that time here. Um, that is um, a transition at this point that I uh, very much favor since 16 months ago, I argued uh, the more uh, members of the commission that have an opportunity to sit as officers and then eventually as chair, the better for preservation in Weathersfield. And uh, I uh, could not um, be more confident of that uh, given the three people that were just nominated. So uh, it's been a, uh, an honor to serve. And I uh, join Claire in this motion. Is there any comment that anybody else wants to make before we call the vote? Because we didn't really discuss it a whole lot in advance, um, Chris, do you want to be clerk again? <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't see your, I couldn't see your face when Claire made the proposal. I couldn't either. I know, I know Mark doesn't want to be clerk anymore, but um, I'm not sure if you want to be and in, in if Doug or doesn't take everyone up. Claire put herself out by saying she's no thank you already. Got it. You might. Uh, I appreciate that, Jen. Thank you. Yeah, I've never been officially clerk. I've only been acting, uh, I believe. Uh, but no thanks. I, I did buy into Doug's uh, movement and the positions, and it makes great sense. Um, and thank you for thinking of me. Could I make a suggestion, which is that I would be happy to be acting clerk uh, on any of those occasions where uh, uh, Chris is not interested. But I think that after the time you've spent on the commission thus far, uh, you certainly uh, are someone who um, should say that he's been an officer. So there you go. I guess it beats the alternative, right? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. For what it's worth. <laughs> so. thank, thank you very much. That's great. Again, uh, at this time, I want to acknowledge our alternates. Uh, we uh, um, did have a change in our alternates. And uh, for the record, I did not uh, have an opportunity to acknowledge the uh, wonderful uh, participation that was provided by Emily Zambrello during her term. And also to uh, welcome uh, Kathleen Williams uh, as she begins her term uh, and joining our existing uh, alternates, Vasek and uh, Damien. Uh, we could not do the work that we do without uh, the participation of all eight, uh, including our uh, staff uh, and our uh, council liaison, Mayor Rell. So I uh, thank you all at this time and when we uh, call the vote. So all those in favor of the slate uh, for uh, Jennifer Wolf as chair, for Mark Raymond as vice chair, and uh, for Chris Lyons as the uh, clerk uh, in the um, year ahead. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Oh, and I should also add that for all, uh, officers, all eight vote. So I should just note that the, uh, uh, I think the five regular members already voted. And um, if the alternates could just state their assent or dissent, that would be great. You guys would all have to unmute though. <laughs> Aye. Thank you, Damien. Aye. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> well, you participate on your first day. <laughs> <laughs> and Vasek? 
Yeah, I'm good with it. That's great. <laughs> I'm not sure. We I have so. consensus. <laughs> and we have our officers. Thank Doug, you, everyone. Doug, I would like to thank you so much for your service in this role. Um, I, I have big shoes to fill, and I hope I do half as well as you have done. I am grateful that you will still be here with your knowledge um, to share with us. And uh, of course, we expect you to still attend every meeting. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, particularly the transition to these um, wonky um, Zoom meetings, which I hope will soon end and we'll be back in person. I think it's been great for the summer when we've had some very simple um, applications, maybe a little difficult with, 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 with more complicated ones, but thank you for everything, Doug. Not just this year, but your very long service and the continuity you provided. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire. It meant so much to me to be here in this position and uh, succeed you, uh, so to speak, uh, and have you be a colleague with us again. Um, this is the greatest hits of the HDC as far as I'm concerned with the membership we currently have. Thank you. Thank you. And Kathleen, I want to welcome you too. I know it's such an odd time to be joining when we can't chit chat before and after meetings to get to know each other and share some ideas on different things, but uh, hopefully we'll be in person shortly. I just appreciate the chance to serve the community that I've lived in for so long. And um, I think I know everyone here and I, I appreciate being here among you. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, tonight, I'll entertain a motion uh, to adjourn. If I could just chime in quickly and just thank Doug as well. Uh, you know, for the chairmanship when I first joined, you were here, I don't know how many years ago, but it, it's been amazing, um, the knowledge you bring to the table and really appreciate sometimes lengthy, unnecessarily meetings, but uh, <laughs> but great, uh, uh, great job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Is there a second? So moved. Thank you, Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you so much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>